How you doing? I'm Matt, and today I want to show you five tools that'll make your woodworking life much easier. I didn't even know I needed these until I got them. Let me show you. If you're interested in any of the products I'll talk about today, there'll be a link in the description below to each one. So these are the Craig setup blocks. These things are phenomenal. I didn't know how useful the stuff like this would be in a woodworking shop until I got these a few weeks ago. They come in this pack and they go from 1 8 inch all the way to half inch. And I gotta give it to Craig customer service because when I got my package, I actually had two 7 16 inch bars in there and did not have a half inch. I reached out to them and they overnighted me the half inch bar. So that was really good customer service. What's extremely useful about this tool is their multi-function. They have a depth gauge. They can, you can check the depth of your cut with that. And then they have a fence gauge. Let me show you how to use them. One of the main uses and one of the main reasons I bought these Craig setup blocks was to set the depth of my router bits. Before I was trying to use a tape measure to do it. And you know, if you're doing that, it, you just can't seem to get it accurate. You got to hold the tape measure and you're trying to fumble with this router to get everything up, moved up and down. What I really like about these, they'll set right there. You can raise your router until you get to the depth you want. Anywhere from 1 8 inch all the way to half inch with this, these setup blocks. I've got it set at a half inch deep. So we've got a half inch and we can test that cut and it is exactly one half inch. Another awesome use of these is they actually have a fence gauge right there on the end. That's what that elongated piece is. That allows you to set your fence depth whether that be on a band saw, a table saw, or a router table. Now we'll be able to have a half inch cut there and that gives you a perfect setup every single time and you don't have to rely on your fence gauge. You can also set this to set the depth of your cut on your table saw. Just like that, we'll get a half inch cut here and then you can set it to the half inch. So if you was making some type of quarter, quarter, quarter drawer or something like that, this would allow you to set up perfect half inch away from everything. So these are actually made out of aluminum. They're machined, so they're extremely accurate. They're extremely durable. You can't bend them unless, I guess you could if you really tried, but just normal everyday use, you're not gonna bend it. Uh, they're extremely accurate. They also have holes drilled in them if you wanted to hang them on the wall or something. I like to keep them in this case that they come in because everything stays nice and organized. So Mike Taylor from taytools.com sent me this on a project we're collaborating on. This was in the box and I put it on the shelf. When I pulled it out of the box, I was like, I don't even know what this is. It was a mystery to me. So I put it on the shelf and I've looked at it and looked at it. I never could figure it out and I was embarrassed to ask. So I sent him a message and said, hey man, what does this thing do? If you know what this is, pause the video right now and comment below what it is if you know. All right, now that you're back, <laughs> it's genius. Absolutely genius. It is a carpenter square fence. It goes on, it's got some brass screws that you just tighten down with the flathead, just snug them up. As long as everything's touching, this thing is gonna be accurate, dead accurate. It's awesome. Let me show you how it works. Man, this thing is so fantastic. I didn't even know that I needed this, but now I know. You can just use that as an edge guide or a square guide for your carpenter square. It'll fit any carpenter square that I know of, it's a perfect 90 and it it's just, Carpenter Square should come with one of these. They're so handy. I actually used it on a mobile workbench build that I'm working on. It should be out this next week. Hold that in place and use that as an edge guide for your router, a circular saw, a jigsaw, any reason you need an edge guide up to 24 inches on a Carpenter Square. It's so inexpensive, but so handy to have. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed if you got one of those. Basically, you, you turn this into a giant speed square is what you've done. The number two tool on your list that you need, that you didn't know you needed, was these Woodpecker's Edge Rule. These were actually sent to me as a gift by a viewer, thank you very much. These are extremely useful tools. I use them all the time now. I did not even realize how useful they were gonna be when I got them. I keep the 36 inch one by the miter saw because that's where I would use it the most. But the smaller one, like this 12 inch, and then there's a 24 and then a six. The 24 and the 36 are my most used, but I do like to have these smaller ones. I keep them in the drawer. 
These are at a 90 degree, one size three eighths inch wide, one side is three quarters inch wide. And what that does is it allows you to hook it onto the corner or the edge of a board. Doesn't matter if you're using two by fours or one bys or whatever, four quarter, eight quarter, doesn't matter. It'll hook onto that and it'll just sit there freehand. What makes these awesome is you can line this up. You can flush it up on one end like that. The measurements are laid out sloped towards your materials. If we were marking for five inches, we can just hold it right there and we got a good accurate mark. We know we got it. The problem with using a tape measure for something like this is uh, we all know that they're curved and sometimes it's just hard to get an accurate mark. Holding the tape measure, it's trying to reel up on you. It's just awkward sometimes. One of the other features I really like about these is they're exactly the same. So they're dead on every time, they're dead accurate. When you're using multiple things to measure with, you're gonna run into problems. I've made a video on tape measures a while back, but no two tape measures seem to be the same. Just starting out here with these, you got the one inch mark is off on all three of these. So if I'm using three different tape measures for a project, I'm going to get screwed pretty quick when you start trying to square things up. Even at two feet, we can see how far off they are. It's, it's a sixteenth off between those two. And these are about a 32nd off. And these are two co-melon tapes and then a fast cap tape. So you can see pretty quick you can get off when you're trying to do precise work. And in woodworking, when you're building furniture and other items, you want to be accurate. It, that's gonna matter whether it's set square, whether it's sitting flat on the floor and not wobbling, you need accurate tools. Another great feature about these edge rules is because this is 3 eighths of an inch on this side, you can actually find center of a 3 quarter inch board really quickly. If you're trying to find center on a two before, this is three quarters inch wide. So this is easy to do. You just hold it square on the board, mark up against that edge. You're gonna flip it around. You're gonna use that other edge to do the same thing. We got center of that board every time. These are also made out of aluminum. So they're extremely strong. You don't have to worry about messing them up. They also come with these stop blocks. The blocks are plastic. And I think for the money that you're spending on these, these should be aluminum as well. They kind of cheaped out on these stop blocks. I, I don't like that part, but the edge rule itself is an excellent product. These are useful to have, so you can make repeated measurements every time. If you're only going to pick up one of these, I recommend the 24 inch. That's the one I use the most often in the shop. If you do get the 12 inch and you wear an apron, a woodworking apron, this thing will fit right in there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezies. Hey, click that subscribe button below. Click the bell icon next to it. Click all so you get notified of all of our new content that we've got coming. This is called a dead man switch or an electric foot switch. The way it works is you plug your tool into the foot switch, and then you plug your foot switch into the wall. You just step on it. Your tool comes on because it gets power. It's just a disconnect switch that you actually just step on. This foot switch is mainly a convenience. Router tables, drill presses, lays, scroll saws, or even a bandsaw if you've got a smaller 110 volt bandsaw. It's just convenient. You walk up, you step on the gas, you got power. I mean, that's just basically all it is is a convenience. Is it kind of a safety feature? It can be if, so I've got this drill press, if I had a bit in there and I'm drilling something, I've got a hand on the crank here, I've got a hand on the workpiece. If something goes wrong at any point, if something gets hung or whatever, and I'm, I'm drilling, all I gotta do is just take my foot off the gas, the power stops, and then I can deal with whatever issue I've got. So a lot of people have scroll saws. This is great for that because you can do your work, take your foot off the power, and then reposition, do your work, things like that. 20 bucks or less for this convenience is just, it's kind of a no brainer. Number five on the list is probably one of my favorite jigs or tools that I've gotten recently. And I bought this, actually I bought it and then they reimbursed me for the money to use on this channel. So full disclosure there. However, I already bought it. So I was already committed. I didn't know they were gonna refund the money. This thing is phenomenal. This is one of the, I say phenomenal a lot. This thing is really a genius design. It's so easy to use. This is a dowel max. This is how you do dowel joinery, right? So I actually bought this at one time, a dowel kit jig. It's plastic, it's cheap, it's extremely hard to use. Nothing lines up right for me. I never had any luck with it. This thing, dead accurate every single time, no issues. You can use 3 8 inch dowels. You can also use quarter inch dowels if you buy the quarter inch setup. Dowelmax actually has a ton of instructional videos on how to use this. 
They also compare this to the Festool Domino. This is extremely much less expensive than a Domino, and it's more strong than a Domino joint, according to their research. Let me show you how to use it. It's so simple. So you can join any number of thicknesses of material. Of course, if you get much smaller than the three quarters of an inch thick, you're gonna to wanna to go with the quarter inch dials. But three quarter and up, I just use these three eighths inch dials, which is what this dial pin jig is set up for. You can drill it up to five in a row, and then this thing will automatically adjust to the size you need. So if I was just wanting to do a butt joint there, I could dial that in. It's gonna be perfectly flush top and side. If you want to do an inset, I actually done a 3 8 inch inset on my workbench here. This is where I first used the dial max. It worked extremely well. Everything come out flawless. So it's extremely easy to use. All you're gonna do is set this on there, make sure everything's tightened up. Up here, these four screw, thumb screws, you'll tighten these two up and that's gonna make it snug against the workpiece. The check mark is your top side. There's a check mark right there. You know, make sure that's flush. This boot side is the face of your work so that you know that each piece, whatever face you're gonna be using, then put the boot to the face as we always kind of remember it. Perfectly centered every time. Now we want this piece to go on there in the face. So we gotta make sure we put the boot to the face. Once they're snugged up, all you gotta do is drill your two holes. That's a perfect joint. It's perfectly flush here. It's perfectly lined here, flush. I mean, it's just, it's as easy as a pocket hole. So the dial max actually comes with several spacer plates so that you can actually create a reveal or an inset on your work. So if this was your leg and this was your apron and you wanted it to inset you know, a certain amount, whether that be three quarter, half, whatever distance you wanted to inset that inside your leg or inside the frame, you would just use these spacer blocks and they come in from 1 16th inch thick and eight, three eighths, three quarter, and then I think this one's an inch and half or an inch and five eighths, something like that. All you have to do is drop those in place over those thumb screws and then tighten them down. That gives you your reveal. So when you set this on your workpiece, it automatically gives you that offset, that 3 8 inch offset here or whatever one you put in there. It'll go ahead and put that offset in there for you. As far as keeping up with everything in with the dial max, I just used a rigid tool organizer that you can pick up at Home Depot or wherever. And that way I keep up with all the parts, pieces, dials, drill bits, everything that I need to use with the dial max stays right in this organizer. Y'all know I've been called the pocket hole king, but this dial max makes it so easy to use that this is my preferred joinery method if I'm gonna make something extremely strong and there'd be no signs of joinery there. You glue this up, man, this thing's gonna be there. It's super solid and it's easy to dry fit things with dials. It makes everything super simple to use. It also comes with a 45 degree offset plate. I'm not sure if it comes with it or if it's an extra add-on. I wanna check on that. 45 degree plate will allow you to do things like uh, picture frames and other things like that or any type of 45 degree angle you may need. I'm extremely glad to have this in the shop. It's small and it works extremely well. You put four to five dials in a piece, that thing's gonna be there forever. <laughs> or until for as long as it can be anyway. Like it's extremely strong. If you wanna go see the dial max in action, check out the workbench build where I assembled the frame using the dial max. If you like any of the tools that were shown today, check the links in the description below and go check them out for yourself. They're gonna make your life a ton easier in the wood shop. If you got value out of this video, click that box right there. It's gonna take you to the next set of videos. Clicking that box gets you the big old virtual fist bump. Also that box right there is another one of my favorite videos. Thank you so much for watching.